Hey, everybody, Ann here. Already had my coffee. I'm outside doing some stuff. Do you hear that sound? Are those hawks? I sure hope not. Because I have made a bigger chicken yard, and I'll show it all to you in a little bit. There's three of them. Yeah, they like to go up underneath of that little ramp there and just chill out and take their dust baths underneath there. It's weird. So yeah, uh, I'll show you the little yard in a little bit. It uh, is pretty janky, it's pretty awful, but uh, it's just temporary. So the first thing I want to do is go forage for some wild stuff. I learned that I've got some pretty cool plants, more co pretty cool plants growing on my property and I'm going to go get them. So today it's all about goldenrod. Lucky for me, goldenrod is abundant around my property. I thought it was just weeds. I was cutting a lot of it down. So I ran it through my plant what is it, PlantNet? Yep, PlantNet app. And yep, all oh, the results came back goldenrod, different kinds of goldenrod. But it's the goldenrod that you can use for medicinal purposes. Goldenrod is used to reduce pain and swelling, as a diuretic to increase urine flow and to stop muscle spasms. It is also used for gout, joint pain, arthritis, as well as eczema and other skin conditions. You can make it into a tea, a tincture, you can even make it into a balm if you want to. And there's other uses for it as well. So I'm going to be studying up on this and just learning what it's all about. So let's go take a look around and see how much of it I can find. I've got goldenrod growing all the way up this little property divider, all the way over by my snake pile. <laughs> it's not a wood pile, it's a snake pile. It's growing all over the place over here. Wait till I tell Mr. Lucas. All of this has not flowered yet, but it will. Or it has flowered and now it's just going to seed. But I've got an absolute ton of it. He always kids me about just going out and eating stuff and that I shouldn't be doing it. But this is where I found the other passion fruit vine. And here is another one. It's the one with the kind of like, well, the leaves that are three. It goes all the way up there. I'm going to leave it alone. I think it starts somewhere down here. And there may be more passion fruit vines in here. I just, you know what, I pulled a big one up and I destroyed it. So that is testament to the fact that you need to really know your stuff before you go trying to transplant stuff you know nothing about because you might end up killing. So I'm going to just keep watching this little vine right here and hopefully it'll be there for me when it is time to transplant it. Look at all of that goldenrod. You know what, my next thing is, I'm going to learn what these are, right here. It looks pretty. <laughs> Don't know what it is. It's not spiky, they're soft. Alright, well let's go look for some more goldenrod, and then I'm going to start cutting it. They certainly do attract the bees. Look at that big old bee. Look at that big old bee. Doesn't even care that I'm here. Doesn't even care. And to think that I had probably cut a whole bunch of this down when I was going on my machete frenzy. You live and learn. Some people might see weeds. I see nothing but wild edibles and medicine. Look. That's a pretty big lizard. Darn cool lizard. Hi, buddy. What are you? Are you going to eat me? I think that's about enough for now. I just got a nice big bunch. Didn't pick all of it that was available because I'm not ready to use all of it. Oh, and I found this little white mushroom. Don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's edible. I'll make sure before I eat it. So today, all I'm going to do with these is hang them up and dry them. So how are the little girls doing? They, they are basically poop factories. Poop factories. This is, this will be like the fourth time I've changed that little piece of paper up there changed the bedding twice already. I gave them full, full bowls of feed and they're already gone. They are not much interest, interested in vegetables. They just like, basically, they like the plain old chicken feed the best. But look at them. They're getting bigger already and many of them have been roosting. So it's been going great. I haven't even had to turn the little heat mat on or anything. These birds, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you see that? I better close this lid. Yeah, I think so. They are getting big. And since these attract flies big time, I'm going to let them dry out 
just for a little while outside before I bring them back inside. If it starts raining, I'll, I'll bring them in. But man, do the flies love these. So do the bees, so do the butterflies. All in all, today's been pretty good. I also harvested some oregano and some peppermint because they're both getting out of control. And oh, I still need to look up what that mushroom is, see if I can eat it tonight for dinner. Uh, so yeah, that little chicken yard over there. It was frustrating. I just got to tell you, it was really, really frustrating because I had a plan. Um, I didn't have everything exactly like I needed, like uh, garden steaks. I, um, I, I need, I, I really need garden steaks, but I figured, you know, somebody had suggested using like tree limbs and stuff like that. And I figured, I've got a lot of tree limbs. So I gathered up a bunch of things, either steaks or steak-like things that I could use to pound into the ground. Um, even just a little bit, because the fencing is so light. It doesn't need to be really, really super heavy duty. But this clay soil is like rock hard right now. Uh, the only thing that I have that's heavy enough to use to pound things in, I mean, I got a hammer, but that's not very heavy, is I've got this big old-fashioned axe that I found out in the woods on one of my uh, camping trips, and uh, it's gone kaput. It, uh, it, the, the little wood thing broke off, basically, um, and the head came flying, and I figured, yeah, I'm not going to... We're not going to be using this anymore. I've got to, I need to find somebody who can restore those. So I don't have the physical strength to pound the stakes into the ground and I don't have the right tools to be able to do it. So I figured, <laughs> I'm just looking out at it right now. I'll show it to you in the next video. It's kind of, well, you'll think it's funny, but I will tell you this much. It's keeping the chickens in. Uh, is it predator proof? Well, uh, you'll have to decide for yourself tomorrow, but I am uh, betting on no. Is it going to contain the chickens inside all the time? I'm also betting on a big fat no, uh, because those chickens can fly. I mean, I've seen them fly on top of that little chicken cage thingy, and uh, yeah, they can they can fly right on out of there, but... Uh, for right now, I've just got them in there, and I'm supervising them very, very closely. And uh, I know I've got hawks in the area, so I've been keeping Betty out and just kind of sticking around and making sure that they know that this is their home. And uh, it's going to be interesting seeing if I can wrangle them up and get them on up into the van tonight. Hopefully, they'll just like go up naturally. But uh, they seem to be having a whole lot of fun out in that yard. They've got so much more room, and I want to put some little things out there for... Oh, yes. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, 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 oh. Would you look at that? Oh, my goodness. Okay, now that was hilarious. I was just talking about them flying out, and uh, sure enough, one of them just flew up on top of that thing. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to clip their wings. Uh, I don't want to have to do that though, but if it keeps them safe, but here's the thing, if I clip their wings and a hawk comes in, they won't be able to fly to get away, but I don't know, I don't know. I'm just going to have to think about this. For right now, they're just being supervised very, very closely. I'm out here. I'm also going to take Patricia's suggestion and keep at least one. Well, I'm going to keep, you know, I will probably end up keeping four of the six new baby chicks that I've got right now. Um, but she suggested keeping one of the blackbirds because hawks see those as crows and they won't come down and bother your birds. So um, I'm going to do that. So uh, my goal is to get these little baby chickens out into the chicken run, not the full yard, but the little caged in thing as soon as they're big enough to not be able to sli slip out the sides. And then that way the leghorns can kind of see them and be around them. And then I'll take them back in and just do that for a few days. And then right before night-night time, um, I don't know, maybe put them in the van once they're bigger. It's going to be a little bit yet, yes. But uh, my goal is to get them outside and indoctrinated with the whole flock. Uh, so hopefully that will work. Anyhow, I'm just rambling now. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go into town or not. I may just take a couple days off and not do any videos. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think that's what I'm going to do. Anyhow, that's all I got for you guys. See you in the next video.
thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.